This is a HeadGum Podcast. We're taking a little bit of a break from the Transformers. We'll get to uh, the last night next week. But uh, right now we're celebrating July 4th as Americanly as possible by talking about Encino Man. I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Zadak. Eric Siska. And we hate movies. Hello, everyone. Welcome to We Hate Movies. Thank you for tuning in, as always. Like I said up top, we're talking about Encino Man. Uh, And this is a film from a grand uh, decade known as the 1990s, specifically 1992, directed by Les Mayfield. Now, to give you an idea, by the way, this this character, Les Mayfield, Uh a couple of of films he's directed here. Uh Speaking of Christmas... The Miracle on 34th Street remake. Ooh. Flubber remake. Oh, wow. What? Uh, Wait, this guy went on to bigger things than yeah. this. Uh, Blue Streak with Martin Lawrence. Uh, American Outlaws with Colin Farrell. Nobody remembers that one. Oh, I kind of do. Uh, the Man. You remember that? The movie where Eugene Levy's scared of oh, Samuel L. Jackson because yeah. he's black? Oh, <laughs> oh right. right. Uh, and then uh, <laughs> Codename the Cleaner. I mean, like, yeah, this movie was kind of, and Cena Man was kind of a hit. It, yeah, yeah, it was, it was a, a hit. big movie. It was a big, by the way. It came out in like late May, so it counts for a modern summer release. Summer release. Some people got on our case yeah. about other movies we've done in the past that weren't considered blockbusters. Yeah, but I've been saying this for years, though. It's a podcast. It's just yeah. well, it's a podcast. <laughs> but like this is the summer blockbuster extravaganza is just another excuse for us to talk about things we want to talk uh, about. Uh, I go uh, fuck I, when a movie came I, out. I, I, I want to thank you, Mr. Jupin, for coming in, and thank you for your <laughs> candor. Um, uh, I, 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 in a in July fourth of two thousand and seventeen, it seems like <laughs> it, during a summer blockbuster <laughs> spectacular, you took uh, a week off of doing Transformers <laughs> movies, which we all know to be blockbusters in the summer, to do um uh, a councilman, uh, Encino Man. <laughs> is it is this correct? Uh, yeah, yes, that's right. <clears throat> I, uh, I, 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 I tend to believe that uh, a blockbuster is in an eye of the beholder. But you have the rest of the year to do shitty movies nobody cares about. <laughs> we need, we ask eight weeks from you every year to do movies that people have seen in the summer that made a lot of money. Uh, 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 grenade! <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, that took a dark turn. (laughs) Everyone's dead. There's people with limbs missing. Exactly. Also, we are taking a week off because we were in Portland last week. We couldn't get to see the last night and and turn an episode around. That will be next week. We will finish the summer blockbuster extravaganza with uh, 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 with a a, a knight's tale of uh, whatever horse shit is going on in that movie. Well, there's also though. There's see that's that's the problem. There's not enough Transformers movies, Mm -hmm. right? And Uh, by the way, we're not doing the 1980s one. Yeah, stop asking about that. That movie is it's it's just a boring long cartoon. Yeah, maybe we'll do it eventually. For sure. sweeps, but uh, <laughs> after after the last night, though, we have a couple other things. W- w- one little, one or two little things coming out that you're you're gonna want to stay tuned for, mm-hmm. including one thing that's been massively requested for years. But until then, Encino Man. This oh, is a movie I've seen sadly like a hundred times. I just say, apparently in old Europe, uh huh. That's what I've been reading. This was known as California Man. Yeah, that checks out. Because nobody like, knew what Encino meant. I never knew what fucking Encino I didn't meant. Either know. I was like, is that a period from when 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 rock men and dinosaurs <laughs> lived? Oh, you weren't aware of Encino, California? No. No, oh, I really? I, really oh. knew. I saw this in theaters. So I was like, Encino, that must be something about, I don't know, like the, the Encino period. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> the Catholic school system failed me. <laughs> what a shock. Wait, they, didn't, they didn't teach you any of that, right? No. Like, dinosaurs are forbidden, didn't exist. <laughs> no, dinosaurs were on the ark, dude, didn't you know? Oh, that? shit. Yeah, they and were in Jesus the back. rode them <laughs> and fed them hay? Yes, he, 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 sa- he saved all the dino bots, as we saw last week. Oh, and then they, he slapped their ass. And he see. He, we wrote it right into Revelation. Man, if you're a, cre- a creationist, please stop listening to this podcast. You're fine. And when Jesus, Jesus slapped Christ. the ass of that dinosaur, like mm. you could hear like a little whistle sound because it's the air going through with a spike in his hand. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, man. Jesus is whistling <laughs> palms. You could hear him coming from three days away. <laughs> Oh, man, that, that guy just waves wow. his hand and cabs stop. They're like, whoa. Totally. My ears, my ears <laughs> yeah. hurt. 
It's, it's probably actually pretty easy to find Jesus at a concert when you're like looking for seats. It's like, where's Jesus? <laughs> oh, he's waving over there. Oh, hi, Jesus. Jesus got good seats for us. Uh, well, Jesus whistling hands Christ. <laughs> They talked about that at school, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and if I could whistle, I would participate in this. And okay. Peter oh, heard you... his whistling palms <laughs> Just and go... knew he'd returned from the dead. Go home tonight and slab some uh, nails through your, your hands. Oh, that's it. And then when you just wave your hand, it just goes... <laughs> That's science. <laughs> well, I mean, that's about as much science as there is in Encino, man. Dude, right? this movie doesn't know how ice works. This movie does not, ice works. This movie does not know. I would love to sit down with a cultural anthropologist and sit down and watch Encino, man, and watch a white Brendan Fraser come out of the Pacific Northwest. Oh, absolutely. In, like, okay, all right. This movie doesn't know the science behind swimming pool technology. <laughs> nope. Uh, but but before we get into any of that, you know what's kind of refreshing to see? Because it's not around much anymore, I don't think at all. You just get them on these old home video releases. The old Hollywood Pictures logo, oh, man. Yeah, that Getting that Sphinx. Mm-hmm. Oh, how cool was that? It's and then you're cool. like, oh, fuck, I'm watching Encino, man. I like this movie, man. I, Do you I, really? Yeah, I, I, I mean, mean it's, it's it's stupid for babies and it's bad, but it's, it's a beautiful era of 1992. And you know what, though? Here's why I think this movie... I think for me, I mean, I guess it's kind of like a light WLM, but it would be infinitely better if this movie did not contain Sean Astin. Oh, my God. He's fucking awful. And can we stop talking about how Rudy's a good movie? And I don't want to hear it about the Goonies. He's a very big part of this LOTR movie, especially the last one. He's crying all over the place. Yeah, Just because you're in something for a long time doesn't mean you're good in it. That's mm. true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, he's just, you know, a fat boy blubbering, and that's just what he does in all of his movies. That's pretty much it. Including this movie, except in this movie, he's also attempting to talk Pauly Shorey's, yeah. which I cannot stomach. That's a problem. There are certain people I can handle saying munching on some grindage, like mm. uh, the dad and son in law. Mm. Sure. I feel like what's his face? <laughs> Stephen Baldwin does a pretty good job. Oh, really? Yep. In Biodome. Oh, Biodome. Don't. Which I would argue is the bigger Pauly Shore movie. Oh. Uh, the mm. box office receipts say no. But oh. as far as like cult classic status, mm-hmm. you get a lot more people talking about Biodome still than you do talking about Encino that's Man. That's true. Might have played on TV more. Okay. Maybe that's the thing. Um, what, what's everybody's top top Shore movie? Let's top go. Shore this, movie, This man. is a Pauly Shore movie through and yeah. through. It is. It's a secret Pauly Shore movie, though, mm. because Son-in-Law, I was looking through his entire IMDb watching this movie. That didn't take long. Yeah. Uh, but Son in Law in whatever, like ninety four, that's the first like it's a Pauly Shore movie. Yes. This is it's a Brendan Fraser, Sean Astin movie, and you've got this guy Pauly Shore in his first like major supporting role. Yes. But I would say just by sheer nature of the one I've seen the most, mm-hmm. I would say Son in Law is my top Pauly Shore movie. Wow. I, I kind of agree. And I actually I told Pauly Shore himself that I liked that movie. Oh, really? And what did he, he say? He was like, okay. <laughs> Moving um, on, buddy. Yeah. Had to talk to him for for, for work once. That's all. Um, I, I I love in Son in Law at the end when uh, it's like Tiffany Amber Thiessen's car for some reason, and that fat guy drives it, and like yep. they crack the case because yep. the guy forgot to move his seat back. I it's kinda, like she's like fucking three feet tall. Of course, fat guy, you got to move the seat back. <laughs> I think about that like <laughs> kind of almost every time I adjust a car. Yeah. Uh, because that's like the, that's the smoking gun. It is. It's kind of great, and it's Paulie Shore conducting a parlor scene, which you don't really. <laughs> and he's got something where he's like, uh, I don't know, somebody off the big must have been driving, and he like points to the obese man. <laughs> it's awesome. No, it is. It is like his masterpiece. Although I will say, I kind of enjoyed it at the time, and everyone's going to be a gasp. But Jury Duty. Oh wow! Oh. You see that movie? Oh, I've seen Jury Duty. Isn't Stanley Tucci in that? Did I make that up? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe you're thinking of Tia Carrere, who's definitely in that movie. Oh, yeah. I, always I don't know if the two is in it. <laughs> I think, because the, the conceit of that movie is he enjoys, like, room service in the hotel. So he, right, like, and he doesn't have, like, a job. So, so he like works a, to extend mm, the court case because yeah. they're all sequestered. Is that the idea? Mm, yep. I, I, a jury duty, I think I've seen the least. There's yeah, also the one you'll forget a ton, which is In the Army that's Now. That's the one I've never seen, actually. You've never oh, seen In the Army Now? I've never seen Him it. and Andy Dick? It's mm-hmm. terrible. Yeah, and, I mean, and, you know uh, why? The second part of that sentence. Tank, oh, sure. Tank Girl, too. Yeah, that's right. He is technically in Tank Girl. 
No, no, she's in that movie, I think. Or who? Oh, Wait, Laura, Laura, Laura Petty. Yeah, oh, she's Laura in, Petty. in the army now. Is he in? He might be. No, in no, no, no. I don't know. I think I'm wrong now. Now I'm just mixing up those two movies. But yes, Lori Petty is definitely in, in the, the titular army tank now. girl. Stanley is also Tucci in. is in Jury Duty. Oh, oh man, and Brian that. Doyle Murray, like Abe Vigoda, Charles Napier. Love that Charles Napier. My God, you, you, we're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go home and watch this. Wow, the star, the stars were out for Jerry. Original duty. title: Twelve Angry Weasels. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I saw your eyes light up when you thought of that joke right before you said <gasps> it. It was pretty great. That's a good joke. Um, yeah, so we start off in uh, the fake uh, uh, caveman era. I don't mm, even know the, we we- gonna- the Weasel Zoic period. Yes, uh, <laughs> and uh, Brendan Fraser's trying to make a uh, a fire. And then, like, he just goes, whoops, it's the Ice Age. <laughs> and that's kind of what happens. And it's so badly constructed. Like, they're just doing Star Trek shaky cam. Yeah. And he, like, reaches his hand out to, like, the cave woman. Uh-huh. And he just starts screaming. And then, like, a bunch of shaved ice falls on him. <laughs> and, and, they, uh, and then, like, a, what is it, like a... Uh... An ice lion voiced by Dennis Leary comes out and <laughs> a little little squirrel. Oh, there's a, there's squirrel a woolly mammoth that. named Ray Romano. Oh, my God. What a bore. Oh, man. Are we extinct yet or what? <laughs> Dude, there's like five of those movies. Really? I thought we were extinct like four movies ago. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, I think like Queen Latifah gets involved in, mm-hmm. in that franchise. I, you know, I, I think uh, Ray Romano is going up for an Oscar in this big, sick movie. He looks like he's got some good lines in that movie. He's very good. That's that's an excellent movie. Sure. And Ray Romano is really good in it. Holly Hunter's. I mean, everybody's good. It's a, it's a great, great movie. But that is one of those things where you're like, oh, Ray Romano's a good actor. And then anyone he who's is? ever watched that Parenthood show goes, oh, well, he's fucking great in Parenthood, you idiot. And I'm like, well, I didn't watch it. And then there's like guy, men of a certain age where it's like, oh, man, remember oh, the man. 60s? And oh, the yeah, guy, no, I and don't. Andre Brower's on that show. Mm-hmm. And uh, what a, uh, the, the least captain of them all, uh, Scott Bakula. Oh, man. He's like the hot one. He, of course yeah. he's the hot one. <laughs> Haven't you seen him? <laughs> I mean, just just look at him. Fucking one to beam up, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we we cut to 1992, um, and Sean Astin wakes up, and like the way we know it's 1992 is like a slushy falls on him. Yeah, a slushy oh. falls on him because there's an earthquake. Another bad earthquake effect for this sequence. It's just we're doing Star Trek shaky cam, and Sean Astin sits up in bed, and you can see him. He's just kicking his feet <laughs> under the covers, <laughs> pretending that the room is shaking. You and then what? a slushy falls on him. He yeah. wants to talk about popularity. Stop trying to be morbidly obese, Sean Astin. Later in, the mo- <laughs> later in the movie, he's walking around. He goes to school uh-huh. and he's like hitting on Robin Sweeney, the prom queen or whatever. And he's got a big bag of walking Doritos. He's There oh, are man. two massive Dorito product placements in this movie. And that's the first one. His travel size bag. <laughs> he's, like, he's riding with Polly Shore on a motorcycle eating Doritos you as he's going to school. You cannot have a walking bag of Doritos. Especially Absolutely not. You- the morning dude that's breakfast doritos Mm -hmm. you can honestly try your best never to be seen with food in public (laughs) that's a great (laughs) move that's what i try especially if you're trying to impress the opposite sex or whoever you happen to be into like Mm -hmm. sure you don't don't be walking around with dorito oh you're not like wiping dorito dust off your face like hey got a date to the prom and that's a filthy chip that's (laughs) a chip that leaves evidence let me tell you i was eating some doritos earlier today as a matter of fact the spicy chili or Mm -hmm. the sweet chili or whatever it is oh yeah yeah that delicious purple bag, dude. Oh, and I was getting dust everywhere. Love the perps. But thank God I was home on my couch watching Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> I wasn't out in public going to school at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, the murderer left a yellow tangy chip dust <laughs> all over the doorknob. This episode's getting good, Stack. <laughs> but, uh, so That's how they caught the Watergate guys. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they they put tape on the door to get back in the office, and it was covered in Dorita dust. This episode I was watching while consuming Doritos was actually pretty great because it was the first case was about how someone sent a pipe bomb to Pat Robertson, <laughs> and I was like swinging a miss bomber. <laughs> ah, oh so, mercy! Uh, Pauly Shore shows up. The audience applauds like Kramer is there. Yeah. Uh, he's like, yeah, Pauly Shore. <laughs> like, oh, thank God, I thought we were going to be stuck with Sean Astin for an hour and a half. And here's another thing, Sean Astin. Uh, if you want to be popular, how about 
not getting disgustingly sweaty before school because you're digging a hole in your backyard to make a homemade okay, pool. Yeah, we got to talk about this. This, this is the is biggest a... stupid fuck thing in this movie. It's so dumb. And why do the parents allow this? And by the way, great father in this movie, I'll say it. Oh, yeah. Uh, the oh, guy uh, who played the father in License to Drive. and He's played a lot of dead. He's Richard, everything. Richard he's, he's in the thing. Or Any, Anyone yeah, who's in the yeah. thing, yeah. Lifetime yeah. Pass. Oh, love that guy. Whenever I see him, my face lights up. <laughs> but, okay, so he's digging this stupid this pool. Here's the thing. You like, can't just dig a pool. High school is over. It is June 1st or whatever. Yeah. Like, we're like weeks away from prom at this point. Like He's trying to make this last ditch effort of popularity. Forget about it. Plan college. That's the move. Exactly. You just got to be looking ahead, man. He was talking about like having like, oh, you know, and this is going to change everything. I'm going to become the prom queen. I mean, king. And uh, I'll be the queen of summer. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean that in any weird way. It was just a slip. Um, but uh, he's like, oh, I'm going to have this huge party back here in my dirt pool. And everyone's going to have fun. Like, it's like everyone you hates you. About? Yeah, everyone, everyone, hates you. everyone hates you. People, also, people hate mud. People don't people, like mud. People, it turns out, dislike mud. People presumably also like Pauly Shore, uh, your best friend, whose name is Stoney in this movie. That's very funny. Uh, so all of these things combined, guess what? They're not going to want to come to your house after prom for anything. Especially when your parents are home and you have a dirt pool. Like, A, somebody's, house, somebody's parents are out of town and they have a real pool. Guess yep. what? I could fucking smoke weed and kind of hang out in a pool and wow. fuck somewhere. Yeah, and oh, not get wow. fucking scabies or whatever the hell you would get swimming in a mud hole. <laughs> Welcome to Sean Astin's mud hole. <sighs> Swim in the mud hole, buddy. And you see, even you see it at the end. It's, when he wins, in quotation yeah. marks. But it's Ugh. still just a mud hole. It's yeah. not like a finished pool. No, it's disgusting. You can't <laughs> do that. You can't do that. No, you're not allowed to do that. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, um, Pauly Shore is there wearing uh, a mesh shirt. By the way, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of bold choices by Pauly Shore. Pauly Shore is the character. Well, he, also the thing is, it's a Bobcat Goldthwait situation. A number one. That's not how Pauly Shore talks. You know what I mean? That was his character. Well, wait a second. Kind of. Oh, really? Bit, or is he? Bit. I thought it was always about like a character, like a, a unique caricature. Oh, he, is, he is a unique character. Okay. Hollywood royalty, some would say. <laughs> and also, like you know. Don't forget that he's always, especially in this movie where he's supposed to be in high school, 10 to 15 years older than what he's playing. Well, well sure. Yeah, well, sure. Well, because even like in in Son-in-Law, they kind of make it work because he's like the RA and yeah. it's like, oh, I've been here for years, buddy. But this is like Stoney's in high school. Stoney is a high school senior. <laughs> you can only get left back so many times. And then like when you're 18, you're legally allowed to drop out of high school. Mm -hmm. So they like. Then it's just fucking GED class. And you're yep, exactly go. right. You're working at the wherever the fuck mm -hmm. during the day. And oh, the wherever G the fuck. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Come man, on I down did, to the wherever I the did, fuck. I did a year there, yeah. You can fuck me in the wherever the fuck, <laughs> you buddy. Know, oh, my goodness. You know, mother, we were at the whatever the fuck yesterday. That lady was rude to me. <laughs> Left I got her a rude bad service tip. at the whatever the fuck. <laughs> here's, here's a tip for you, lady. How about nicer service at wherever the fuck? Or you can go work wherever the fuck else. <laughs> Oh, the biggest competitor. They're across the street. <laughs> Wherever the fuck else. Mm -hmm. So right away you get some Pauly Shore slangage going on. One is not so outrageous, which is, of course, him just saying major babe constantly. Sure. But then you've also got crusty. Oh, <laughs> yeah. he's crusty. And then, of course, the one that I still kind of don't know what it means. Grease in the do bag. <laughs> what is what is what is grease in the do bag? I'll tell you. Okay, so do bag <laughs> is one of those large, like lizard fat creatures in Star Wars uh, that, that I know. Stormtroopers sometimes wear. Yeah, which, not wear ride. ride. Yeah. So grease in the do bag is one of the stormtroopers like has to like clean it. You know, uh -huh, okay. it's all about regulation and looking right. sharp. So yeah. you got to like wash the do bag. So is grease in the do bag and Pauly Shore's like doing chores? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're making this up Ch chores for the empire man they, yes. they pile up like nobody's business lord vader i saw the dewbacks on tantooine and they were excessively dry <laughs> who's that that's palpatine sort of and oh. now you burn <laughs> burn for the dewback dryness <laughs> <laughs> yeah palpatine likes his wet dewback <laughs> So uh, they get to they get to school. He does have a good line here. Paul oh, sure. Shore, which yeah. is kind of centers you is because like Sean asks, like, oh, man, we're going to be the king of school. And he's like, 
face it, we're losers. Yeah, but Pauly like, Shore, ah. and I'll say this right now because it's going to be exemplified throughout this entire conversation. Pauly Shore is hands down, Stony is hands down the most intelligent character in this film. Yes. Oh, big time. It, both, emo- both in emotional intelligence yep. and just regular, degular intelligence. Absolutely. Uh, coming from a guy who said degular. <laughs> <laughs> just regular, degular. Yeah, degular. Uh, the word is schmegular. <laughs> It's pronounced schmegular. Oh no, schmegular. <laughs> oh no, I didn't shower after sex. I'm covered in schmegular. <laughs> Gross. Well, here's Michael. What is yeah. grindage? Oh, grindage, grindage is food. Is food. It's yeah. food. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was like, you know, sex. Your grindage is Munching on, on grindage. Munching on grindage, man. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it depends. I don't know. Maybe, maybe yeah. it could be. It depends on what, you, what you're eating. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Yeah, you, you munch on some grindage, and also I, I believe wheezing the juice uh-huh. is like taking advantage of <laughs> of a situation. You yeah. wheezing the juice, you wheeze the juice, or it's not specifically referring to that s- s- slushy juice. No, slushy? not not specifically slushy? slushy juice. Because at one point, because uh, I think it's when he's he's eating dinner at their house and he's talking to the dad and he's like. You know, I can understand you're upset by my wheezing your juice or whatever it is. And it's basically him saying, like, I'm taking your food all the time. Here's my question, though. Why this DVD didn't have a Pauly Shore's subtitle track on it? How would you spell wheeze as in wheeze the juice? W-H-E-E-Z-E? I don't yeah, know. I think so. I think there's definitely an H. Involved. I've seen it spelled a couple of different where, ways on where, the internet. Oh, on the internet. Oh. Yeah, W. I've, I've seen W in the IMDb uh, quotes is W E E Z I N G, but then in another one it's W E A S I N G, like weasel. Yeah, I think, mm. it, yeah, because I think because he's the weasel. Yeah, I think exactly. it's kind of like oh. it's kind of merging. It's yeah, kind of a merge, shit. Mer- merge job. Oh it's wow, mer- merge job. You can get those at the wherever the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> so it's kind of like, it's like a Pauly Shore portmanteau, is it you're saying the, the wheezing? Yeah, it's yeah, okay. it's related to his uh, character. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, so when we get to high school, we pull up on Pauly Shore's scooter, that bag of Doritos. Like I think it's a thing where he's like, I don't know, buddy. This seat, <laughs> this only seats two. That Dorito bag makes three. <laughs> <laughs> and we're trying the- to attract anybody. Doritos <laughs> aren't gonna do it. At least do cool ranch. <laughs> Uh, and so the the lady in question is played by Megan Ward, I think her name is. Uh, she's also the uh, love interest from PCU. Yes. Uh, and there's a fucking horrendous line here where, like, Sean Astin is basically saying, like, man, I could have got with her when we were younger because she was, like, ugly or whatever. Sure. And Polly Shore says, uh, well, that's because she hadn't hit babehood yet. Oh, ew, Stoney hadn't yeah. hit babehood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he is fucking, Sean Astin mm. is browbeating this girl into liking him. Like, any chance. This is like, disgusting. He's just, like, assaulting her. On, he's like, hey, not assault's a, a rough word, but he's like, hey, oh, you, you want to come to prom with me? Let, let me move these Doritos out of the way. Hey, you want to come to prom? You want to hang out after school? He's like, I have a boyfriend and I don't like you. Also, yeah. you said I was ugly once, so they, fuck you. They, well, <laughs> you know. Maybe she was, but <laughs> <laughs> they were childhood friends. Yeah. And he's just doing that pathetic uh, thing. You know, he's just like, you know, try, I don't know. Th- he he's doesn't got a shot. He doesn't have a shot at all. He's, it just hadn't like, been, he's the loser friend. He it hadn't just... been invented yet, but oh. it, it had it been. Yeah. This character would have used the expression friends. Oh, absolutely. Oh, of course. Yeah. Big time. Of course. That's, Big what, time. that's what I was getting at. Big mm-hmm. time. Also, so we don't forget it later, and we're talking about his creepiness towards this girl. Uh, there's the part at the end oh, of the I- movie where he goes like, hey, remember this? And holds up a picture of two little kids naked in a bathtub. Uh- <laughs> that, yeah, Is nothing that says blow me in the Dude. back of your car like a picture of, remember that time we were naked? Yeah, when, your says, mom, we, when your mom bathed my genitals. He said we've been naked together before. and We've been naked together be- before. That's what it is. Good God, man. Good what a God. fucking idiot. Robin Tunney in this movie. Robin nice. Tunney in this yes. movie. Love Robin Tunney. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. She's like the friend character. She has one of my favorite lines in the movie, which is uh, when uh, the guy from the Burbs is teaching them about. Yes. Okay. Oh, right. Rick, it's all, I get Rick it. do come on. All right. Do come on what? <laughs> uh, Rick do come on. I don't know, something like that. But he is the guy from the Burbs. He's also in Groundhog He's, Day. I love, actually, I love him and stuff. That's why I looked him up yeah. after this. And he was the announcer. 
for Thick of the Night, Ellen Thicks. Are you talent. kidding me? I'm not that wow. He, he was brought down from Canada, wherever the fuck, to do yeah. Thick of the Night. Yeah. And then that got that went nowhere. So he right. was the man who was the <laughs> announcer for Thick of the Night. That's right, Stephen. I'm cheating on you with other character actors. That's right. Welcome back to the Ducaman Files. <laughs> you might I not- too was in Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> He's now starring in The Grave. <laughs> oh, is that guy dead? Yeah. Oh, no. He passed away? I think like 2015. Oh, damn. That stinks. <laughs> I just rewatched The Burbs recently. That's a fucking great movie. I haven't seen it in a really long time. Yeah, it totally holds up. With that guy that looks like Jeff Sessions. <laughs> <laughs> yes. His name is uh, Bruce Stern. Oh, no, no, no. The other guy, the, the little it's, Weasley it's, guy. They all look like Jeff yeah. Sessions. Oh, wait, wait. Henry yeah. Gibson? Yeah, I think He was so. in Blues Brothers? Yes, exactly. Oh, the Nazi crashes. and Blues Brothers. Yeah, yeah he looks That's exactly right. like Jeff Sessions. Yeah, he you're does. Right, you're right. Um, so, but this uh, teacher is teaching them about, uh, is teaching them about, like, cavemen. Again, like, we're in June in fucking high school. We are all checked out. Checking right out. Senioritis in like stage four. And he shows them what a caveman looks like, Cro-Magnum man. And uh, Robin Tony's like, he looks dope. I date him. It's like this really like <laughs> awesome delivery. Uh, and so Megan Ward's boyfriend in this movie is a DeLuise offspring. He's a uh, Michael DeLuise, the youngest of the DeLuise. DeLuise. Mm, of, uh, from Dom DeLuise. <laughs> really? Is yeah. he? He's from that nut? Of the, yeah. He that was a, nut sack? Wait, he, is he his son? He's yeah. his son, yeah. Him and Holy Peter shit. DeLuise from 21 Jump Street. And I believe Michael DeLuise Holy in the later shit. episodes of 21 Jump Street. Michael DeLuise was also on Gilmore Girls. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. He's like a better looking <laughs> version of Sean Astin. So like I could totally see like yeah. this girl be like, why would I be with you, dude? This guy looks a little bit better than you. Yeah. He's, he's, not, he's not currently eating Doritos in the class. No, no, that's just his father. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, yeah, he's, he's got Dom DeLuise as a dad. That guy's so much fun. Oh, my God. Dom DeLuise was so much fun. But, you know, R- R- it must have been annoying, like, going to their house for dinner, though. Because, you know, like, Dom DeLuise might have been, like, on the whole time. Uh-huh, and, like, yeah. no one else could talk at the Bunch table. Bunch of Burt Reynolds stories. Yeah. Sign like, me up, man. But then, like, you can't talk, though. It's like you're going to go to talk. a place and just listen, I'm which there is there to fine, learn, man. But, it's, there to learn. you know, like, if he really gets going and it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be amazing. That you get, classic well, Dom DeLuise like, laugh. You have to make him do a Dom DeLuise oh, laugh. That is your that, final that feather in the cap. That's right. how you know you're, like, in, you're in the DeLuise yeah. circle. Mm, can if I you, be as you, funny as Johnny? <laughs> <laughs> Dom DeLuise is going to invite me to his couch <laughs> Yeah, if he does, dude, watch out <laughs> He's got oh, arms like an octopus oh, Dom DeLuise man. has been dead for years I know, I know but he would have assaulted you on a couch <laughs> um, So we kind of, uh, while this is happening uh, The Encino Man, the titular Encino Man Oh, I'm sorry, before they go No, I'm, I, I'm, it's just a kind of a regular day at school They go back and then they dig up the Encino Man. Right, because he mm. continues work on this mud hole. Mm-hmm. And he finds this big uh, icy body. And he also finds a bowl. By the way, that bowl is your retirement plan. Yep. You take that yep. bowl to any fucking museum, mm-hmm. that's a couple mil. Also, those bones are pretty good, too. Because, <laughs> by the way, when they thaw this thing out, that would just be a bunch of hamburger meat. Of course. <laughs> that's not how anything works. No. It's yeah. not how science works. You no. know, It's not like Jurassic Park. It's not in amber. I mean, that's why Captain America is realistic. Because the only way he survives yep. frozen mm-hmm. is because he's a super soldier. Mm-hmm, exactly. If he was just a regular schmegular dude. That dude, fucking hamburger meat. Totally. Grill that up. <laughs> this is this is a great idea. You make Encino Man 2 because Encino, as we know, only refers to the town in which the movie takes place. It's two kids now, two millennials, uh, digging up a pool. But, uh oh it's the Red Skull. Oh, oh shit. And that's how you introduce yeah. him back. It's an M- a secret oh, MCU movie. Wait, that the, would be the great. Red Skull, where we last left him, <laughs> was being, like, zapped away by that cube? Yeah, the Infinity Cube. And that's going to take him to Encino? Well, no, I mean, I, mean, I, think, I think he also whoops his, his oh, frozen. frozen. Oh, you know what? I'm into it. I don't care. <laughs> Fucking make a plot hole. I don't give a shit. Well, Red no, Skull I should to, be I have in... to go back to high school. <laughs> Red Skull should be in uh, Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, my it's... name is Chad Hydra. <laughs> Chad Hydra. He's got like a blonde wing. <laughs> oh, how do you use the smartphone? Oh, no. How are the, how am I using S- Snapchat? He's, his face still looks like Chinese spare ribs. <laughs> exactly. Oh, no, he's exactly. got a blonde wig on. <laughs> but he's so cool. Oh, yeah, exactly. He's so hot. <laughs> 
So they dig him up, and then I, we're kind of mixing some stuff up here because they leave this block of ice and go to school a second time, yes. I think is the idea. Yeah. And then, like... They have, like, I, space heaters on it to, like, defrost it. Right, but this is what's so stupid is, like, this fucking thing is just, like... I mean, I understand we're talking about Encino Man. Sure, a Paul Shore movie. this thing is, like, ten... Like, this hole that he's dug is only, like, ten feet deep. You're not having this, like, totally frozen... I mean, it doesn't well, matter, but Jesus... All the earthquakes, buddy, they've been wrestling it up. Oh, you think it's yeah. just been getting pushed up by a tectonic plate? Like, exactly. is the idea? Oh, shit. That's Shoot right up. And you know what, happened. dude? I'd be so mad if my kid dug up a caveman and didn't tell me, like, this is the money, my friend. Yeah. Yep. This Sell is that money. thing to a zoo. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, they keep saying, uh, Sean Aston, like any movie like this, it's like, Oh no, they're gonna they're gonna dissect him. Like they're not gonna dissect him. And even if they did, who cares? He doesn't have a soul. Yes. Yeah, he's a caveman. He, he was before, he was he was invented before Jesus. It's before the whistle palms came yeah. down to bless mankind. <laughs> like if you fucking went up to that caveman and you were like, <laughs> like he wouldn't know what you were talking about. He, he would not have any man. idea. <laughs> It's a fucking animal. But we all know because we've gone to church what the whistle palm is. <laughs> So, so he winds up going around the house and, you know, he's like, uh, he's surprised by a garbage truck. There's a, a legit Sideshow Bob rake gag. Wait, oh, absolutely there question. is. Does the, does the does this garbage truck make an elephant noise? It makes a lot. Uh, I believe it's a lion noise. Same thing to me. There's a lot of non-diegetic sound that's happening in this movie. There's some boyoings and so on. Oh, and so really? Forth. I yeah. missed the boner boy. <laughs> well, I don't know. If I thought those boner. were diegetic because when everyone's I get a, getting boners in this when movie, I get a boner. It does that noise. <laughs> <laughs> What's that a South Park gag where it's like when someone gets an erection, like there's a little bell ringing sound? Oh, that's something. I think it's like Butters has that happen to him, or I don't know. Who who cares? It's fucking South Park. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, but yeah, he, he he winds up watching TV and like kind of learns how to dance a little oh, bit. Oh, oh he learns bit. how to dance a lot bit. <laughs> he just turns on the TV and it happens to be at that iconic moment of the terminator saying, yes i'll be back in the middle of the afternoon <laughs> i don't think so i mean i guess they have premium cable by the way not they bad. must have hey, this is 1992 bad. we weren't doing like tv broadcasts like that in the no. middle of the day yeah, i mean tnt I mean, wasn't slumming it like that yet it smells like hbo to me mm -hmm. oh, man that's it. pretty great what you the know, fuck do you need to dig your own pool exactly. for when you got hbo i was about to say the same thing also Outrageous. if you're this dad and you've got this money you're like look i don't want you digging up my backyard fucking up my property value exactly. this is my goddamn house Why i don't i was in the that? thing god damn it yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> I guess maybe it's supposed to be a thing where like they're so caught up with their careers that yeah, like that's they very don't true. notice because yeah. there's definitely a part when they find the the frozen cube of the caveman uh -huh. where they go up to the window and they're screaming like oh we found this caveman or whatever and the mom like closes the blinds she's like oh I'm on the phone with or a whatever client or whatever else. So I guess that's how we explain that sure. away. But I mean, let me tell you something right now. If my dad looked out the window when I was a senior in high school, I mean, today, if I was doing this <laughs> and I'm just digging this huge hole in his lawn. Mm -hmm. Oh, you better believe he'd be coming after me. I'll tell you what. The only time I ever dug a hole in my yard was to bury a dog. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's the only that's the only thing your parents will condone. And you know what, though? The fucking crazy part was it wasn't your dog. It was a dog that trespassed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good sunned it. Oh man! No, Steve it was my dog, and it's dead. What if this is in a sleepy main town? It was Stephen King's Encino Man. Oh, and not shit. only is he uh, a caveman, but he's got like some old, he's got some old Cthulhu curse on him, like Cujo Man. Yes, exactly. Wow, that'd be great. That would also mean that D. Wallace would be in this movie. Mm -hmm. Better casting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Get some Denise Crosby. So, like, uh, the boys come home uh, and they find their their caveman, and they they scream a bunch. And there is so much screaming in this movie. Like, whoa! <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah, exact like that kind of, kind of thing. Yeah, it's like, it's fun. <laughs> um, and, you know, they, they subdue him with fire, and immediately, tw we're only 20 minutes, 28 minutes in, I'm too sexy montage. Yes. Oh, man. And oh. I was I was so mm. funny because I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, can you believe there's an I'm too sexy montage in this movie? And my wife was like, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was 1992 and it's a shitty comedy. Of I mean, course I can. We, I mean, this is a whole other podcast. This is something for another day, but I would love to know what the patient zero is. Oh, what wow. was the first movie to do that? Interesting. This might be it. This is this early. Is, this is this an early or, candidate. This or like Pretty Woman. What was I'm too sexy playing well, a pretty had some woman? Fucking changing montage, didn't they? When they scrubbed her up, she was like a cave woman. <laughs> she was a street cave woman. Yeah, that was the, that was the idea here. So they start pouring chemicals on this dude, like, mm-hmm. and because it's like, oh man, he's so crusty. But like that dude would be dead. Dude, like uh, this caveman, yeah, hey, if he goes. Yeah. It, he would be dead anyway. He would just breathe our air and just be dead. Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> like all these diseases. Polly Shore would air fucking disease? exhale a bunch of weed in his face, and that caveman would fall down dead. Or would he get stronger? Oh man! Oh, can you? Oh, can you imagine? Actually, that's something. Mm. How is there no smoking reefer in this movie? Like at I, it's all? It's just implied. His name is is Polly Shore's yeah. name is Stoney. I think that's kind of what it is. It's like that classic. Um, I'm trying to think about it. Like it's like you know he's always stoned, but we never get to see it because it's a kid movie, yeah. right? Kind are you looking Are you looking up the right side, Fred? Thing I am. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No, because now you got me curious what this fucking Patient Zero is of this. Oh, and- it's, a, it's something <laughs> called. Uh, it's a German movie. Oh yeah. Called Manta der Film. Uh, the film. And then it's been actually a lot of I, no. The first American film is Encino yep. Man. Oh yep. my god! Wow! Oh my god! <laughs> so this movie is incredibly important to it's the very important this cultural and everything. film. Yes. Wow! But look at this though. Look at it take off from there though. <laughs> episode of Baywatch. Episode of Melrose Place. It's gone airborne. Grumpy old men. What blank is check. Grumpy old men. I don't know. All also our uh, Richard fucking uh, do back there. Whatever his name is. He's the limo driver in blank check. Hey, Jack Lemon, I need to get a hat for my date with <laughs> Anne Margaret. <laughs> oh, I'm too sexy for my hat. Uh, we're talking Beverly Hills Ninja, the That Darn Cat remake, episode of East Enders, episode of The West Wing. Hey. Jack Lemon, you're not going to date Anne Margaret in those pants, are you? I told you, you can't, <laughs> you can't borrow my hat, all right? <laughs> How is my father still alive? <laughs> those movies are fucking terrible. Hey, Burgess Meredith, you're not going to get buried in that suit, are you? Oh, <laughs> I'm going to fuck all the women in the grocery store, you bum. There was a period of my life, and I mean like a solid year and a half. When I mean, I, w- I would used to go to sleep to two movies. That was yeah. the thing to do. Oh, sure. I would always go to sleep to Grumpy Old Men because the that movie is so relaxing. Mm-hmm. It's like ice mm-hmm. fishing. The yeah. movie is ice fishing. That's true. And, but you uh, just have the incessant bantering of Walter Matthau and Jack now, Lemmon. Is it just the sequel that has Sophia Loren? I believe so. Uh, the so, first yeah. one's Anne so Margaret. That's the summer the, one. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's the summer one. The first one's the winter Both, one. Both uh, Kevin Pollack? I believe so. Oh, yeah, because oh, Kevin Pollack is one of their sons. And then Daryl Hannah is the daughter. Oh, yes. Oh, wait, and then no, they get wait. together. And, and it's a mystical universe oh, where Kevin, Kevin Pollack dates Daryl Hannah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> How is my son so short? <laughs> was Walter Matthau a tall man? I don't know. I feel like yeah. he's a pretty, pretty handsome old man. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I, 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 never mind. So we, they ba- they bathe him in like scope and like fucking Murphy's oil oh soap God, and, and God knows whatever brush else. His teeth and it's like those things would be like rotten little fangs. Like, <laughs> yeah. rotten, like half of it would be at least no, they'd be all gone. And who's washing this dude's bunghole? That's my question <laughs> because that's where it's all. That's where it's all living, right? Like it's all the taint that's where and it's the living and the bunghole. Exactly. That's where the thing is. It's oh going to crawl God. out of his body and fucking... <laughs> okay. Now I'm just picturing, like, Jack Lemmon helping Walter Matthau clean his bunghole for his date. <laughs> All right, I don't want to do it, but I'll clean your I'll clean your bunghole. Clean my goddamn bunghole. You <laughs> lost that bet. All right, bend over. It's the 90s. She's going to want to see my bunghole. <laughs> All right, I'm, stay still, okay? I'm going to be bleaching your bunghole. <laughs> All right. do 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 <laughs> Take that Hollywood legend. <laughs> oh, absolutely. That's a, what an odd couple they were. Clearing each other's bungholes. <laughs> Somebody's gotta do it, man. Uh, <laughs> Clean my bunghole, motherfucker. <laughs> oh shit. He was in the original. That's right. It's yeah. a little too right. there. 
um, what was that? Uh, Taking a Pelham, yes, one, two, three. Yes, that's right. Playing a film for him this summer. I'll be there. Ooh, you got to see that great movie. Um, so they get away with uh, owning a caveman by saying that he's an <laughs> Estonian foreign exchange. Student. Sure, and like the idea is uh, to your point about like a uh, oh, working parents because they're like he's like. Man, does no one listen to my what I say in this house anymore? Like, oh, right. I ran this by you months ago, and now you just have this other person in your house. By the way, there's mud all over your house. Like, dirty fucking is uh, Cro-Magnon ass mud all over your house. Yeah, it smells like this mud came from a prehistoric bunghole. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> But also, like, like they have to come home to this. It's like, why are there fucking cave paintings all over the walls? Yes. Why is something on fire? Who the fuck is this guy? What's with that freshly cleaned bunghole? <laughs> like, none of these questions are answered, and they're duped by, don't you remember I told you that? The fucking oldest trick in the no, book? Not, not happening. Not in my house. Your friend's sleeping in the street. I don't give a shit. And also, by <laughs> the way, Pauly Shore does not live here. Like, you know, yeah. the dad is very polite. He's like, Stanley, why are you here again? It's more like, I've told... And you do that then. But then later, it's, you pull Sean Astin aside. It's like, he is not coming over for dinner anymore. Yep. And you, you need put that your part. foot down. I'm sick and fucking tired of Stoney. <laughs> don't you think I know where that nickname is coming from, Ex- son? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I, I can mm-hmm. smell it. But he's like, you know, oh, Stanley, can I presume that you're coming, uh, you're staying for dinner or Yeah, whatever. sure. Yeah, not, not in my house. And they're doing this thing that it happens a lot in movies. It's clearly like KFC bucket of chicken, but we're putting it on a plate and throwing <laughs> yeah. the bucket away. Mm-hmm. Because no fucking family just makes like clearly fast food fried chicken this no. way. But this is what we're eating. Oh, it's a movie pet peeve of mine. They need to be resting on paper towels if you're making them at home. That's that's the way oh, the, the authenticity. Right. Exactly right. right. And this family, they all fucking hate each other. And these parents are workaholics. Where, where and are you finding a, the time maybe, for this maybe, impeccable maybe, chicken? Maybe they... They did cook it at home, and they use, but the, all the paper towels are gone because they're up his bunghole <laughs> cleaning out. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. the caveman with the paper towels on his ass. Yeah. Uh, there's also there. a totally useless uh, little sister character in this movie. Sure. She what? just kind of like talks there's shit no to point. Sean Astin there's a no, few times. She then she disappears, mm-hmm. right? Like she gets kidnapped or something. <laughs> or maybe the caveman eats her. That's a deleted scene. <laughs> Because also, don't pretend for a second like this thing wouldn't just fucking bite your throat out, and that's the end of Stoney. Or hit your dad with a rock or something. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't want this dangerous animal in Mm -hmm. my house. And Mm -hmm. the other thing, by the way, where do they get these tall clothes for? It's Sean Astin's house. The guy's like 4'3", and you got uh, Brendan Fraser's like 6'2". See, that's the thing is they they needed like something like going to the mall. Like, that's where your montage is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, seriously. the movie's not going to the mall. (laughs) It's only 89 minutes. You could have a trip to the mall in that montage. Seriously. I'm not cleaning. Oh, I got to get my eyebrows waxed at the mall. <laughs> oh, look, Jack Lemon, a threading stand. <laughs> oh, yeah, he Let's says do it there. Racially insensitive things to the people <laughs> working at these things. All right. I guess I'll get my ears pierced at Claire's. <laughs> there was a dumb bit of trivia on the Tribune and like who could even know if this is true. But it's so fucking stupid that it almost has to I be. I think I know what you're saying. We're because t- you, Steve mentioned the clothes, yep, uh, it and it talks about like how uh, the costume designer like had all these clothes for Brendan Fraser mm-hmm. or for the Link character. They call him Link. Yeah. Uh, but then it was Brendan Fraser, and he's like six three or some shit. So she had to like buy more clothes or like. She had to make clothes. She had to make, yeah. Like, but like, what the fuck like is you? Andre the Giant? Why? I mean, six three is not that irregular no, of a height. It's not. But regardless, sure. why? 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 Like, what the fuck are you doing? Just wait till the person is cast, then <laughs> get the costume. That's a great idea. Well, like, what I you, also what the read fuck? on there that they were considering Paulie Shore for Link, and like, what world? What? No. Because the only thing that Paulie Shore is good for is spouting nonsense, mm. and if he's a, he's, if he's a caveman. Mm. That can't say anything but, ah! yeah, like, you know, it's not going to work. What yeah. am I watching for? I mean, this is the first of many times Brendan Fraser had to learn what a microwave is on, on film, <laughs> that's right? That's true, that's true. It's microwaves, this, televisions. This, George of the Jungle, mm. Blast from the Past. Mm. The dude Short doesn't know Short Circuit it. where he played the robot. <laughs> Short Circuit where he played the robot. <laughs> Grumpier Old Man 3, what he played. The, the, the caveman. He played, <laughs> he played Walter Matthau's bunghole. <laughs> That was the grumpiest old man. <laughs> it's talking to me now. <laughs> you cleaned it too good. It's got a mouth of its own. <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Oh, filth. 
Just oh, film. Oh my god, we might have to talk about those movies one day. Uh, those are good movies. I, I enjoy. I you yeah. know they're bad, but they're good. Yeah, I, I would watch those. I, would I, I barely remember that second one. The first one I I'd seen a bunch. Mm. That was a real. We're fucking playing oh, this on dude. CBS in the afternoon. Do you guys remember uh, like My Fellow Americans? Oh, My Fellow Americans is definitely an episode. That's, I've seen that oh, movie like Brim- fifteen times. Wilfred Brimley's in that too. That sure is. Jack Lemon and James Garner. James Garner. Oh, you're right. No, because th- that's the thing. Is the, the Grumpy Old Man franchise really spawned a craze about old men bickering at each other right. on film. And well, we, we did good. we did those odd couple movies. Didn't we did they, two of those odd couple movies. Didn't they do a boat movie together? Boat cruise or something. With Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau? Yes, maybe? I believe that that's the two of them. Maybe. Yeah, like, yeah, no, I think, I think it is. It's like an odd couple, but not the odd couple. Right. Yes, they're on a ship and I think Brent Spiner's the bad guy in whatever that oh, movie is. That sounds good to God me. God damn the 90s. Ain't that guy a robot? <laughs> <laughs> I saw you play a robot one time. How was that? You know, I was in Hopscotch. <laughs> the only people that remember Hopscotch are the people that work at the Criterion Collection, and good for them. The Criterion Collection is restoring my bunghole to former <laughs> glory. See my bunghole in 4K <laughs> HD. You, oh, know, you know, you downloaded this episode. Like, oh, I like Pauly Shore movies. You didn't think of eight minutes on fucking Walter Matthau's asshole. <laughs> And he doesn't deserve no, of that. Course, no, I mean, just think of the stuff that thing passed through the years. <laughs> it's a lot of sandwiches. Oh yeah, a lot of hamburger sandwiches. sausage. Uh, so we get. So basically, the plan, which doesn't make any sense, which no. is uh, I'm going to bring Link to school, and that's what's going to make me popular. You yeah. can't tell people you have a caveman for popularity purposes. No, or just like or an, an Estonian. And also, guess what doesn't make you more popular and or more attractive to girls? Hanging out with a more attractive person. Yeah. 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 Brendan Fraser as this caveman. Yes. Is still handsome as fuck. Of Early course, 90s he Brendan Fraser. King of the school. Immediately. He, they dress him kind of like that one guy from Animal House, the weird one. The one that doesn't have sideburns mm. and has glasses. You have to be more the specific. trench coat. Oh, the guy who he uh, he was a he was a National Lampoon writer. Yes. and he like wasn't he's he the, the one who leads the marching band into the wall. Wasn't he like a, a big one? Didn't he, he was. He's the guy that that fell off a cliff. In I Hawaii. think that was him. Yeah. Yes. He, yeah. He, yeah. 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 Uh, I can't remember his name, but yeah, he they do kind of dress him like that. Because where is this trench coat coming from? And where do why can't he have sideburns at all? Like they go way up with the sideburns. Yeah. There's nothing there. Well, it's weird because then also it's like. Like we're working towards dreads. I mean, I guess yeah. you could only get that hair so clean. Sure, it I is see. a caveman. I mean, I get, you just have to buzz it and start over. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's a bad haircut that they give him. Mm-hmm. I mean, but they're, they're but just, it's just sexy high school kids. Enough, man. It's but too that's, sexy. Yeah. That's <laughs> I mean, that's why you take that montage to the mall. <laughs> yeah. Shopping spree. Yeah. We get a haircut. It's yeah. all there. Everything's at the mall. And then with with the mall, you get the, oh, what about this hairstyle? Uh, he turns around. Oh, what yes. about this hairstyle? He turns around. Yeah, I and then agree, we clap at the last one. When yep. They, do, Correct me if I'm wrong. When they put on the clo- yeah, when they put the clo- I can see that happening. When they put on the clothes, it's like the first changing, mm-hmm. and then you're done with the montage. Like, no, 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 buddy. I'm yeah. sorry. I need to see a couple outfits. Give me those options. Yeah. I want to see some frowny shaking heads uh, for a while. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, give me like the wrong looks. Give me like the like. Oh, now he's a rockabilly guy. Or <laughs> oh yeah, totally. Yeah. He's wearing a fucking stray cats t-shirt. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so they bring him to the school, and he does this really cool, like, like handstand into a flip off the the balcony or whatever. And uh, first on screen appearance of Rose McGowan happens at this. point. Oh, that's right. She's got like almost no lines in yeah, this movie, just, but she's there going. <gasps> yeah, which is the, that's cool. Yeah, that's something. I'll mm-hmm. take some 1992 Rose McGowan. Mm-hmm. Why the hell not? Then there's like these two rap guys that came off the set of Teen Witch for no reason. Oh my oh, god, yeah. these people are terrible, and they're just doing some bad like freestyling. And Brendan Fraser is like dancing with them and that's when you realize he's learned things Uh uh-huh like now Uh he's taking that knowledge from the television bringing it and putting into a real world scenario (laughs) that's what i do every day (laughs) (laughs) that's what this show is essentially yeah pretty much i mean but this is like he has to have superpowers for some reason like yeah he does this like why is he spider-man exactly like no he would he would be too frail for this world 
Yeah, that's by the way. Yeah, muscle atrophy. Oh, Let's right. talk about that for a second. And Let's also, he talk would talk about it. He would be Inuit of some kind, one shape or another. He would definitely not be a white guy because Anglo Saxons weren't here yet. Well, there's no. Neanderthals. Yeah, but they were. I mean, like they. Yeah, I don't I, know. You know, I don't. I yeah, don't know. That, that, you know what? They'd be he, something he wouldn't that be wasp, isn't anything. He wouldn't be waspy Brendan Fraser, that's and he for wouldn't sure. be six foot three. He'd be like four foot four. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like oh, we we're smaller right, back then. Right. Yeah, you should. You he'd know be, what? He'd be short. You get Sean Astin as the caveman. Oh. I was gonna say, or Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> oh my god! Yep, yep, yep. Imagine Gilbert just walking around like, eh, eh, eh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a movie I'll watch, man. <laughs> and that? Gilbert Godfrey as Link. What was that caveman from uh, Cartoon Days where it had like a loincloth and it was just all like fur and it had like a big bat? Oh, a uh, Captain Caveman. Yeah, from Gilbert uh, the, Godfrey is Captain Cave. I like it. Was that a Hanna Barbera cartoon? It was. I believe it was off the Flintstones Kids. I think that was what they. It was like the show within the show. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, I know way too much about Captain Caveman. Really? Off the tip of my tongue. I don't really? know why I watch a lot of Flintstone Kids. You know what my most favorite Flintstones thing of all time? The is? chewable vitamins. No, although my God, I grew up with those. <laughs> I'd probably be dead without those. Yeah, you uh, would. <laughs> but um, no, that fucking uh, the famous commercial of, you know, Bon Winston cigarettes. <laughs> oh yeah, God, <laughs> those were the days. Well, it's also like them being like horrifically misogynistic. Like the the wives are doing the work and we're smoking cigarettes. We're Way great. to mow that lawn, baby. Ah, Winston cigarettes, Bon. The cigarette you want to smoke when the wives are doing the chores. <laughs> it makes me really relaxed. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's fun. yeah. The, I, in, Speaking yeah. of caveman, that was kind of nice. It was yeah. That, I, the, the Flintstones movie is a movie we got it. That's a stay tuned. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, but Dabba mm-hmm. definitely. That's actually you know what everyone forgets to, that 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 spawned the McRib. That's where it came from. What? It was a no. promotional. No, it was That's not. what it was. Are you fucking kidding me? That's the patient zero. Of the That's McRib? exactly. Wait a second, though. Is this the only time? Because we're talking. Viva Las Vegas. Well, uh, <laughs> Viva, Viva Rock Vegas, oh, first of all. Excuse me. No, but like as far as promotional talk. shit, we're talking. We've, we've obviously seen collector's cups. We've seen mm-hmm. hot sauces with Congo, the volcano sauce. But was this the first fully promotional meal? It so- I think it is. I mean, is. that's a, a sandwich, a promotional sandwich, Damn. my God. <laughs> and it was a success. Whoa. So successful, they had to bring it back all the time. Oh, yeah, the McRib is back, and then Whoa. the McRib is gone, and then the McRib is back. Oh, wait, maybe I'm, no, I'm totally wrong. Apparently it was in the 1981. No. But I, think, I think they brought it back as, a, like, you know, for... That less is fake r- news. The <laughs> McRib was real. The reporting on We Hate Movies was fake. Okay, no, no. In the summer of 1994, McDonald's brought back the McRib nationally as a tie-in with the theatrical release of the Flintstones. And because it had been laying dormant for years, much like a caveman. <laughs> oh. There was one frozen patty somewhere that we found. <laughs> Let's cook this. Oh, yeah, we can sell that with that fucking movie <laughs> man you know you get a mcrib you take a look at that thing don't be surprised if you see a fucking nike swoosh on it <laughs> what is that but sneaker material <laughs> it is it's just barbecue sauce on sneak <laughs> sneak it in barbecue sauce so robin tunney likes him yeah uh, immediately instant she, attraction and she's like the kind of you know she's a goer as we'll say and she's like, What's oh, that mean? she likes to get down to fucking. And she's like, oh. meet me at Blades tonight. Blades, by Blades. the way. Blades. The coolest place ever. They like it's they pull an up. It's skating rink where everyone hangs out. And an arcade. It's like the biggest baby shit ever. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're you're graduating like, high school. You're not there at all. And then Sean asks, like, oh, we finally made it. We got the invite to Blades. What do you mean you got the invite? It's a public business, <laughs> Sean Aston. Show up. Just go if you want to go to Blades. By the way, every, the cool kids are smoking in some fucking hammock somewhere, oh, getting yeah. handies. That's yep. what's happening. Exactly. Whoa. I guess that is what's happening. It's 1992. We're listening to fucking Stone Temple Pilots getting jerked off in somebody's <laughs> garage. <laughs> Time to take a ride. <laughs> but that's the thing. This, is this really- party's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, Jack Lemmon, we're teenagers in the early 1990s. <laughs> Why did the two of that? See, that's what's never happened. Oh, A simultaneous look- body swap movie. They yes. both go into the bodies of teenagers. Yeah. Oh. But no, the way you do it is it's them playing teenagers, but every time they look at a mirror, it's yes. like a, yeah. a teen. Oh, of course. Because yeah. and they, mean, look you're at going mir- the- they look at the mirror all the time so you could hear the voices. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, too bad they've both been dead for years. They were great. Um, 
This 1992, by the way, is it's very much like the we didn't know that the what the 90s were going to be, so we were like, oh, it's just going to be the 80s again. Like yeah. th- this whole movie is like essentially because it's like thrash metal all over the place and shit. Like we're not so grungish yet, but there's also and this is PCU's rotten with this too. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's all of like we were obsessed with this in the early 90s, and it, it petered out for the most part. The like. It's like merging of metal and funk music. Oh, yeah. We love to get funky with the chickens. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, chickens are involved? No, I don't know. You're a funky chicken. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Keep up. Funky I'm chicken. I'm trying. Uh, but, like, that's all over this movie, including whatever the fuck this band is at the prom, which, mm. like, if you look on, uh, like, either Wikipedia or the, the Tribune, it's like, a super group of all these people from all these other what? bands. I didn't know there was a super group involved. Yeah, no, it's like it's this singer it's, from it's this and Tin it's- Machine. It's got David Bowie, <laughs> Roy Orbison. Tom oh, Brady. right, it was Tin, tin Machine. <laughs> That is a fun Wikipedia wormhole. You just Wikipedia the word supergroup, and it's a oh, listing shit. of every supergroup ever. And annoyingly, the longest listing is for the Traveling Wilburys. Mm-hmm. Oh, you can keep that. Wait, maybe that's what I was thinking of. That's what that's what Roy Orbison was in. Yeah, Roy, it was Tom Roy Petty. Orbison, Tom Petty, George Harrison. Right, and then Tin Machine was a Bowie one. But, yeah, no, Traveling Wilburys, they, they, no, which they one's, two songs. Which one's Crucial Tonk? Because it's got Cassandra, <laughs> Cassandra's drummer. <laughs> Oh, who's Anthony, I believe. Who's Anthony? Who's this Anthony? Is, who's Anthony? My drummer. This is a fake band. Oh, actually, right. Okay, so right here. Uh, so this is live from the Tribune. Uh-huh. The band playing at the prom is funk metal supergroup. Oh, fuck. Get ready. Infectious Grooves. Ooh. Featuring Mike Muir of the thrash punk band Suicidal Tendencies. Okay. With vocals of Dean Pleasance on guitar. Uh, or so wait, Mike Muir's doing vocals. Dean Pleasants on guitar, Adam Siegel of Excel on lead guitar, Lars Ulrich, S- Stephen <laughs> Perkins of Jane's Addiction on drums, and Robert Trujillo of Suicidal Tendencies, who currently plays bass with Metallica. Oh, and now Dean Pleasant is, is that Donald Pleasant's son? Yep, not spelled the same. Oh, like damn it, Dean, that band's not going anywhere. Hey, get your <laughs> ass off that stage. Oh, put that fucking guitar down. You'll never be featured in Encino, man. <laughs> The super group dad <laughs> would understand it. Get your ass away from infectious grooves, <laughs> Dean. You're my son, Dean. Um, I don't know. So at Blades, uh, uh, Michael DeLuise, uh starts beating up. Uh, also, because we're playing hockey, by the way, we are playing hockey. Um, anyone see that his number two of the bullies is no. uh, from uh, Swingers? There, Sue from Swingers. Oh, really? No, yeah. get out of town. Yeah. That's a movie you can't possibly be forced to care about anymore. <laughs> Swingers? I like that movie. I, you know. I, I, I think it, 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 it doesn't, doesn't age, age as well, well yeah. because yeah. of the like the swing, <laughs> the swing yeah. music culture revival of the time. But um, it's I just it's like fine. you listen to them talking now, yeah, it's, and it's you're a like little embarrassing. Yeah, <laughs> good. Well, but it was just of that era where everyone had to be Tarantino, snappy, yeah. snappy, bra. I wanted it's 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 my dream, and, and I'm too old for it now. Is to be a bully's number two in a movie. That's just oh, always sure. That's right. the coolest role I always to get. saw Billy Zane with those 3D glasses mm-hmm. in Back to the Future. Billy but Zane did not wear the 3D glasses. Who the fuck was that guy? That was a dude named uh, Casey something oh wanna, come on be, you know that guy's name yeah. i want to be casey no but that's the coming just... in at number five my <laughs> knuckle sandwich exactly you're just, all you do is stand back and like hit your fist with your hand yeah. and like shake your head and like, yeah right, yeah you never go to prom nerdlinger or whatever else you say the easy way <laughs> Uh yeah, Billy Zane is the one who says the easy way right. in Back to the Future Two. His You're character right, was taller. Match. What a fucking Casey Simasco is the dude oh, who that, plays three D. Okay, 3D. what's he up to? Is he dead? Click on that thing. Is Casey Simasco. Let's find out. See, people listening don't give a fuck about anything. They want to know if this guy's three D. No, three D is alive and well. Uh, he was what's just featured project? on an episode of uh, Billions last year. Wow, he's good doing pretty him. good. Good for Thirteen him. episodes on damages as Detective Whoa. Dan Williams. Oh wow, he must be doing better than the guy. From Billy uh, Zane, yep. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, in 2013, TV movie called Killing Kennedy played Jack Ruby. Oh, oh that's, that's a where Bill O'Reilly movie. Oh, man. fucking Pinhead the Motion Picture. Yeah. But Fuck yeah, that guy. My favorite number two bully of all time is mm. the kid from Karate Kid. The guy that's William hanging out with... William Zabka? No, the kid who's hanging out with William Zabka. Who's <laughs> <laughs> just like, yeah, kick, sweep the leg. Oh, man. Um, 
we uh, uh, Link is not uh, adept at fighting, which is surprising to everybody for some reason. So they, they our second montage is either a cover or an, a remix of Mama Said Knock You Out. It is a cover and a half, okay. because that is not LL Cool J singing these words. And like we're watching a bunch of like Sean Astin's wrestling tapes. Yeah, I do. I do wonder how you don't have a fucking date for the prom. <laughs> um, Am like, I misremembering from something I watched last night with a bunch of tall glasses of water? Are they yeah. also putting on some kung fu movies? They are. Yes. Okay, and then like he breaks the board over Sean Astin's head. Oh right, we're having a lot of fun in this scene. Oh yeah, no, it's fun as fuck, dude. And then like, but like Link like is enrolled in school so much. So so that like the teacher is calling his name on a roll call and i'm like how did that happen he's got a he's got a permanent record in this movie you could fake anything back then. I, yeah, it's that's true. fucking June, though. You can't just <laughs> be <true>. like, <laughs> that makes "Here's no this sense. Estonian foreign exchange student." What are you for talking five about? Five days. <laughs> yeah. What? What? <laughs> Figure this shit out, better people who wrote in Sino Man. Um, Come on. There's a cameo from uh, the kid who played Data in The Goonies, who also played. Oh yeah, um, short round. Short, short round, round. Yes, of course. exactly. Yeah, a, uh. a, a rare teen appearance for him. Mm. Uh, he's, he's oh, kid. that's yeah. He was more just of a child, a kid actor. Yeah. yeah. So this is the 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 uh, 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 the, the driving scene. Oh, when oh god, because because it's again, it's June. <laughs> what are you doing? You either finish driver's ed or it's not happening <laughs> exactly. right now. Exactly. You're just gonna you're gonna learn how to drive in your dad's garage. That's how that works. <laughs> um, there was a, a, a third montage almost right after that with Wooly Bully. That's kind of him acclimating and kind of ruling the school. Yeah, and dude, let me tell you, Wooly Bully is one of the worst songs ever mm -hmm. written. Yep. Mm -hmm. they, chipmunk cover or yep, no? They loved that shit back then. I remember that chipmunk cover like it was Vietnam. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? It was dark. <laughs> And I watched it at night, <laughs> and it was scary. <laughs> it was in some movie that the Chipmunks did, right? Yeah, yeah it was Chipmunk the movie. Chip, Chipmunk Adventure. Oh, fuck that movie. That movie's kind of weird. Fuck I've seen that shit. movie a ton. Yeah. A ton. Oh, I remember it scarred me. Uh Oh, and yeah, it, that Mama Said Knock You Out cover, definitely performed by a band called Scatterbrain. Oh, oh nice. Oh, sick. Shit. Sick. Hey, that's sick. <laughs> yeah, Bad Brain said no. <laughs> oh, yeah, they definitely did. So there's like some weirdness with uh, the uh, the the, um, uh, the driver's ed. We wind up going to like they do uh, the two wheel thing. Yeah. We gotta mention the two wheel thing before someone tweets. <laughs> yes, they go up on the car, two wheels. Link is a crazy good stunt driver because he's got no impulse. What's awesome, and it's kind of one of my favorite parts of the movie, is when we're doing. It's like a it's like a head on shot of the car turned on the two wheels. You can see the look on this stunt driver's face. Oh, really? And it's totally like, oh my god, I think I'm losing it. <laughs> like this dude is <laughs> white shitting. It? He's shitting his pants doing this car stunt. It's kind of great. I, I, that's great. I love that. You think this is, <laughs> this is a, a stuntman Mike movie. Uh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, he's eating the sloppy nachos. He's like, mm, yeah. <laughs> Little known film called uh, Encino Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Brendan Fraser's a caveman or something. Yeah, that was, that was, that was a guy. A couple episodes of The Rifleman, you wouldn't know it, or Encino Man. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably. Speaking of Rose McGowan. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's probably like the best thing Kurt Russell's done in a long time. Yes, I actually love that movie. A lot of people dislike it, but no, I but think it's uh, great. Guardians of the Galaxy too. Yeah, yeah. No, I guess that's true. Yeah, I kind of forgot that already. And Hateful Eight, which I, I love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I think as far as like him working with QT, yeah, uh, Death Proof is a better performance than Hateful Eight. Sure, it's more of his. That's that, that's and because oh, also we don't want to. We did mention it, but this whole. Uh, fucking disgusting bathtub picture thing happens at that ice rink bathtub oh yes yeah yeah. yeah. we've been naked together yeah, yeah, yeah. he pulls oh. this out at blades at you blades. finally make Dude, it to blades are you fucking kidding me you're pulling that shit at blades yeah <laughs> it's fucked up <laughs> it is fucked up the, blades is a 100 percent zero nudity picture zone yeah. Maybe or well, otherwise. Well, maybe the older variety. <laughs> well, you know, be awesome. How is there not a character played by like I don't know, not this, but like a Matthew McConaughey type, sort of okay. like, well, I guess more like a Wooderson type sure. guy who's like Frank Blades and he runs the Blades ice rink and arcade. I would love that. You let's, need a let's character. Let's see a little right. bit more of this Played culture. Played by Ruben Blades. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
my god, if it was just Reuben Blades this out. That's that's yeah. Reuben Blades. If you, you know, he might retire eventually. Yeah. Whenever he does, just open an ice rink, man. I mean, I guess that's probably. We're not so crazy with the ice rinks anymore, but maybe. Oh, it's coming back. Yeah, kids are playing hockey still. It'll come back. Um, So we wind up after the driver's ed thing at this, like, East L.A. uh, kind of place where it's (sighs) basically a bunch of Latino people. Mm -hmm. And it's we're doing that 80s, like, fucking weird science thing. Like, uh uh-oh, we're at the, you know. Right. It's when Anthony Michael Hall takes him to that, like, blues club. Yes. Anthony Michael Hall's doing, like, a super racist voice. Like, at least that doesn't happen in this. But also... That same thing happens in that movie Adventures in Babysitting, uh-huh. yeah, where yep, we go to like yep. a like a quote black club. Yes, but so this we're replacing it because you know I guess we're in L.A. So it's like let's go to this like this Latin bar and it's like Pauly Shore is like peer pressured into drinking and I'm like okay yeah mm-hmm. like yeah Stony would not have a problem putting them back no yeah exactly well, his name is Stony of course that's what he's doing all day is he's yeah. fucking huffing he's paint he's fucked up all the time <laughs> yes exactly the entire time of this movie he is fucked up he huffs paint until it's dry and then he eats the chips <laughs> <laughs> But that's it's kind of fucked up. Grinding because- some paint chip. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Totally. Munching on the paint chip grindage. <laughs> Killing my brain cells, buddy. Paint me- the house, buddy. <laughs> I'm gonna paint your Dorito dust, brother. <laughs> the weasel sucking up the fume. <laughs> Got the paint shits. <laughs> oh man, those paint shits. <laughs> hey, where's your mom's house cleaner? Let's clean a caveman, but save some. For the weasel. <laughs> uh, yeah, somehow they like not only like do that crazy driving course thing, but then they just steal the car and drive it to a bar. Yeah, and they're just drinking in the daytime. Drinking in the daytime, but then this is a weird thing where like, oh, he steal he like steals a woman at one point. Well, Brendan Fraser, there's this whole thing where this dude, you know, he's like maybe a gang guy. Who mm-hmm. knows what's going on? Uh, they they don't dro- they don't name drop the Latin kings. Yeah, but, you know, we know what's going on. For fun, let's just assume that that's what's they're happening. D- they're dressed very stereotypically, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Oh, like you see that lady over there, Holmes? That's my girl. Like if anyone up to her, I'd have to fucking cut their throat or whatever." And like Sean Astin and Pauly Shore, are like, "Oh, don't worry about it." Of course, that caveman comes sniffing around. <laughs> he, he kidnaps her. Uh huh. And nothing really comes of it. I, you don't even see what happens or where he dumps the body. <laughs> Doesn't he just take her to the dance floor? Yeah, they dance guess, a okay, little bit. Yeah, they, just, just, they dance the night away. <laughs> oh, I guess I looked away from the TV for about 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, I just assumed she was murdered. <laughs> there was a black dahlia or something. Oh, shit, Holmes. They found her cut in half in a field. <laughs> at an all old haunted hotel. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> Try and fucking prove it. I dare oh, you. Dude, that's the move. He's a fucking ghost from like the 50s <laughs> that gets into a teenager's body. I love it. I love this movie. <laughs> right? How come Frank became so casually racist all of a sudden? <laughs> Ew. But then, so there's this weird thing where like, out of no, and we're doing like some serious day drinking. This has to be total tops one o'clock in the afternoon. Absolutely, because we, we 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 skipped school, right? And so there's like a fucking ice raid on this bar. Yeah, they're like immigration. I'm like, okay, movie. Yeah, whatever. I, at first, I <laughs> By thought the way, when you when you texted last night that you didn't you didn't understand like this movie doesn't understand ice. Yeah, you were talking about this scene. Oh. <laughs> No, because like that's when they're shocked that he melted. Yeah, yeah. no, I get it. Uh, oh, yeah, but but yeah, yeah. So they all just start like fleeing from this bar, and it's this crazy thing. And somewhere along the way, Megan Ward's character winds up falling for Link. Link in this whole scene, I guess, because he's like heroic and gets them out or whatever. Sure, but it's also a weird thing where like Sean Astin thinks that they're like getting along and bonding and whatnot. So he, they, him and Pauly Shore get arrested. No, Sh- Sean Astin and Link. Get oh, Link get arrested. And like he uses his one phone call to call Megan Ward. He's like, I, I'm using my one phone. I got arrested. I, I'm using my one phone call on you to ask you to prom. Fucking loser. And he goes, and she goes like, Yeah, no, but I'm gonna take Link instead. It's Could you so ask awesome. him? Oh my god. Oh, dude, this guy Sean got Astin cucked. He got just- cucked. Well, I don't know about that, but he should kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> but 
dude, I mean, Sean Astin, come on, man. You have one great time at a Latin Kings bar with this chick, and you think she's going to go to prom just because you used her as your fucking phone call? I By mean, the way, he all- needs to move on. The it, way that he yeah. just lays it on to her is just... It's unfair for everyone. It's unfair to himself. Go see what Rose McGowan's up to. Maybe she'd be exactly. into it. Maybe she'd appreciate a line in this movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> More than one. Uh, but then, like, the whole jail thing is just totally dropped. There's no, like, happens. parents showing up to bail them out. Because the whole family is gone in this movie. Yeah. It's, it's really weird. They're just magically out of jail. Cut to... Sean Astin driving him to the town line like a dog he doesn't want. <laughs> it's such a weird scene. It's so, so, and, like, so, so, so weird. And Paulie Shore like, follows up with him, and he's like, hey, man, what are you doing? And he's like, uh, you know, he'll be better off with somebody else. And they get in this fight, and my favorite line in this entire movie is Sean Astin. Oh, I, I wrote it down, too. It's, it's really dramatic. He's like, all you care about is nugs, chillin', and grindage. Uh, yeah. Those sound like three great things. They sound like it's kind of all I care about. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, at some point, like basically, uh, my other favorite line is Pauly Shore is like, "Those are the desperate words of a loser." Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> he really hits him below the belt. I but Pauly Shore is telling Sean Astin something that is one truthful and two something that Sean Astin has yet to realize. What Sean Astin throws at Pauly Shore, Pauly Shore knows that he loves smoking weed, eating, and hanging out. Yeah, that's it. What? That's not an insult. That is the thesis of Stoney. <laughs> what are you doing? That's, yeah, that, that's what I do. And my hair is brown. Thanks. Yeah, all you care about is wearing mesh shirts <laughs> and driving a rascal scooter. Yep. And he's like, no shit, buddy. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> We Bye. Never, why can't we just specify, by the way, that nugs are weed? Like, if we're saying yeah. nugs, yeah. yeah, someone has to be. Yeah. How fucking hilarious would it be if a caveman got high? That's come I mean, on. I, I think that's sort of what we're doing in that convenience store scene with the. But I feel like, Electra's dad and some other guy. Yes. and the guy from Forty Year Old Version. Yes, <laughs> is that him? Yeah, yeah. And, oh yeah, yeah. And One that's the, it's some the fucking, guy that didn't go to jail for murder. Right. Or for attempted murder. Oh, right. One of them went up the river. He did, yeah. Uh, but it's just, it's that weird thing where, like, you've got these dudes who they're they're putting on, especially the dude from Electro is putting on a hardcore Apun and Hasapima pedal on voice. Sure. Saying, wheezing the juice. Sure. And they're, like, drinking out of his, like, slurping machine. And he's like, stop wheezing the juice. And you're like, uh Why are we allowing anyone, why we ever thought it was a good idea to allow, allow customers to come into a store and use a microwave? What a gross idea. Go yeah. home. That's terrible. They because still do it. Do they? Is that oh, yeah. Totally that's, sure, that yeah. is alive and well. Yeah. So I can just go into some place and use a microwave. It's like using a yeah. bathroom. It's worse than using a bathroom. It's well, absolutely worse than using a bathroom. No because, way, what? Because here's why. Here's why. I'll tell you right now. Because you could use that bathroom. Mm-hmm. You fucking take a dump in that 7-Eleven bathroom and flush the toilet, and that's one thing. Yeah, or you're not taking the turd and putting it in the microwave. But you could. You totally <laughs> could, dude. Who knows who's... And that is my point entirely, uh-huh. Eric. Who is sticking what in that public microwave? Well, <laughs> consider, you know, consider these fast food restaurants. They just use public microwaves too, and like these, and those people are probably more disgruntled than your average, uh, you know, trucker. I love whatnot. that we don't have public health care, but we still have public microwaves in this fucking country. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, ne- by the way, we'll never have public health care. We'll yeah. never have anything. But we'll always have, but no private mic. Well, we'll still always have pro- public microwaves. And, and just true. imagine, because like. Yeah. Think how fucking stupid people are, right? Like, thank God Pauly Shore and a caveman know to take the burrito out of the wrapper. Sure. Right. But guaranteed yeah, some motherfuckers putting a sure. fucking plastic wrapper, like, and when then the you, whole you, microwave smells like plastic, mm. and you know the dude at the convenience store is not cleaning it. Of course So yeah. then you go to use it, and then your shit well, tastes dude, like plastic. Man, fucking shop at your own risk. <laughs> <laughs> or you just know? like microwave at home. Go yeah, home exactly. and microwave. Use yeah. your own microwave. Well, That's why I'm not for public microwaves. <laughs> okay. I am just you know, I'm not going to defend the people that use... Like, if you use it, that's on you, buddy. That's all I'm saying. But um, that's sh- why... Sh- Senator Shishka, <laughs> oh, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, just curious about uh, your thoughts on public microwaves. Uh, we have a statement from a podcast. Uh, you say you're for public microwaves, but... Um, uh, Grenade! <laughs> <laughs> I was for it before I was against it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just gross. And that's why, you know what, if you need to get... Uh, a, a, a heated up piece of food 
uh, at a 7 Eleven, man, yeah. it's those rolly, the rolly heater things that are behind, like a hot dog, a oh, sausage, yeah. Yeah. A, a delicious 7 Eleven taquito. Oh, man. Buffalo chicken, you better believe it. I, I you know, you just got to stop eating taquitos at a certain point. It's, it's tough. Mm-hmm. You need to make a rule at the beginning of the year I will not consume mm-hmm. a taquito. I think like 25 is the cutoff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or at least like substituting a meal for taquitos. Yeah, you can. It's not a snack. Food. It's no. not just a hangout walk in snack. <laughs> Because then you're just, you look like you're holding a thing full of cigars. <laughs> but like, it's oh, what just, a fancy guy. Oh, wait, is that a cigar? Oh, no, is that a cigar? No, no, that's a gross. It was, it was three for $2 taquitos uh-huh. at 7-Eleven. Oh, I know that Been game. there. I've been there. Been there. Been puffing the 7-Eleven. So it's prom now. Um, uh, Link is going to go with Megan Ward. Uh, Michael DeLuise is really upset because he's been uh, uh, cut out of the whole thing. And he's like, I can't believe it. And she's like, you're a jerk because you're a bully. And he's like, yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> so he sneaks into Sean Astin's house and finds all these pictures behind a framed picture of his girlfriend, by the way. Yeep. If you yeah. want to, if you're trying to out this guy as a weirdo and a creep, that's what you bring. Not the caveman pictures. They'd be like, yo, he's got her fucking prom picture. Fucking, you know, yep. her, her, her yearbook picture from last year framed in his house. And the glasses stained on the frame. <laughs> shoosh. Remember that one? That's oh, yeah, catch. shoosh. Yeah. Totally. Shoosh, that's, what he, that's his catchphrase. Oh, who's? Uh, the, 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 the bully. Michael DeLuise. Oh, wow. Right. Shoosh. Oh, right, right, right. Because okay. a, a wowman was talking over right. him. Right, I thought, yeah, he was telling someone to be quiet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, he's yeah. telling her to so fucking he's got shoosh photo- up. He's got photographic evidence that, whoops, he's a caveman, and he's going to do the mm-hmm. whole thing, right? And um, uh, Sean Astin and Paulie Shore decide not to go to prom, and then, like, Megan Ward, like, kind of feels bad. She's like, no, we'll be, I'll go together. It'll be fun. And yeah, like, yeah, and then he's like, oh, I can't because I'm grounded. What with getting arrested yesterday? I suppose I have to finish my dirt pool. Dude, he, they should just be smoking a ton of pot by this alongside this dirt pool. Just, like, fucking go for broke. Well, what you do Gravity see, bond. That's what we're is, needing. Oh, yes. that would be great. Oh, right, yeah. What you get, though, is there's definitely a fucking keg by this dirt pool, and it's just Sean Astin and, and Pauly Shore Fucking wheezing the juice out of this keg. Oh, that's alone. Cool. Yeah, that's not sad at all. But this is so it doesn't make any sense though. He's grounded because mm-hmm. he got arrested because sure. he was fucking in that that Latin Kings bar. <laughs> but the parents are cool with the pool being filled, with a hole being filled. Let's stop calling it a pool. Yeah, it's a hole. Yeah, it's a it's hole. A the hole is filled with hole. water. Mm-hmm. Uh, they somehow got a keg into the backyard, and there are lamp decorations all over this place. <laughs> Cut to like nineteen seventy something, I guess Illinois. Uh, hey Gacy, you putting in a pool? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm putting in a big pool uh, for prom. Oh yeah, yeah. Prom party. <laughs> I'm going as a clown. <laughs> Gonna do my act at the dig, prom dig, party. Dig. <laughs> Gacy, pool's looking good. <laughs> Gacy, that's our American work ethic there. Build your own pool. <laughs> Don't leave it up to the Chinese. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Building a pool. Yep. Oh, and the next day, the pool was gone. <laughs> yep. It's all filled in. Casey gave up on the pool. <laughs> hey, is that a young drifter helping you with the uh, pool filling? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, up until last night, then he, he drifted along. <laughs> Man, the things they did to those people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but yes, uh, at, at the prom, uh, Sean Aston realized, like, oh no, he stole the caveman pictures, and I guess he'll get. I don't even. I mean, I don't even know what the what the penalty could be for being a caveman. Yeah. And well, meanwhile, death. but also Michael Deloise did a fucking B and E, man. <laughs> yes, going exactly. up, you can fucking sent him to jail. Mm-hmm. But like, Rest yeah, what what what, what the evidence? fuck did he think was gonna happen? Like, either it's uh, nobody believes you mm-hmm. because cavemen are long gone, mm-hmm. or the reaction, which is what happens in the movie, which is woohoo! <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, He's a caveman. Is, this is at prom when like they're crowning Link and uh, you know Megan Ward is right, uh, prom, prom king and queen. Exactly, and Rita himself is doing it. Short round himself is doing it. Oh, that's right. Yes, you're right. Yeah, and uh, pretty cool. That's where the shoe happens, and uh, and then it turns uh, out Michael Deloise is the loser. 
Yeah, well, he then uh, calls somebody a gay slur, and I guess oh, like right. Link understands gay slurs and doesn't appreciate them because he starts going ape shit on this dude. Yeah. That's why this is more than Bill and Ted, because at least in this movie, the villain says the gay slur yes. and is immediately uh, get his gets his comeuppance from someone who's from from caveman times that's more progressive than he is. <laughs> exactly. Most people find that offensive. <laughs> you know, those Bill and Ted kind of assholes. They shouldn't be saying that just casually. They shouldn't. What makes the least sense in this scene, though, and we're talking a movie <laughs> where a dude just revealed someone to be a caveman <laughs> providing photographic evidence. And everyone went, woohoo. Yeah. <laughs> after the woohoo, after the beating with the gay slur, Link throws him off the stage where Michael DeLuise lands in a prom cake? <laughs> yeah, I don't know where this prom cake... Prom cake? Speak I mean, it's the same... I guess it's the same part of California wherever fucking Shia LaBeouf's uh, frat party is, right? Oh, right, with the frat cake. That's yeah. right. <laughs> now we got prom cake. Bullshit. It's like a six-foot yeah. sheet cake that this dude face plants in. California loves cake. <laughs> That's why they have those beds. California cakes. <laughs> Hey, Jack Lemon, looks like our classmate was a caveman all along. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> I'm talking about you. <laughs> so then, how often do you have to clean your bunghole? We did it two weeks ago. Am I good for a while? How long does this bleach last, Lemon? <laughs> Gotta pay you to do it all over again. Now let me check my watch. Yeah, <laughs> five o'clock? Uh, and then... Because, you know, after all this, mm -hmm. what caveman comedy wouldn't end without choreographed dancing? Sure. And, like, the band is, like, totally into it. They're a super group, so they have this caveman song. Oh, yeah. all, like, caveman dancing. And it's, like, it's, first it's Brendan Fraser, and everyone's kind of cool. And then, like, Pauly Shore gets into it. Then Sean Astin gets into it. And, of course, he's the worst because he's Sean Astin. Mm -hmm. But then the surprising part is mm. the whole gymnasium gets in on yeah. it. Yeah. That's strange. Yep. That's a strange thing. And then Rucker Hauer comes in dressed as Dracula. He's like, is this Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the movie? Or is that is that like down the hall? Because it's the same kind of thing. Uh, and then you, you cut to the pool party, the whole party. And everyone's there and jumping in this disgusting Gacy pool that we Man, have. And Sean Astin's whole party, by the way. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> You'll catch that on New Year's <laughs> Eve on L.A. Public Access. By the way, you jump in that thing, you definitely got to clean your bunghole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you swim in this fucking hole, dude. You're getting worms. Mm -hmm. yeah. Somehow you're getting worms. Uh, but there are more earthquakes, which un which is kind of the, the, the stinger. It's kind of a stinger scene almost. It's a stinger scene, and it's after Sean Astin somehow is allowed to kiss this girl. Sure. And she's like, you know what, dude? Like, I'll kiss this one. I'll give this guy a thrill on prom. I'll give him like a, a closed mouth. Kiss, yep. and then I'm going to fucking PCU, and I'm you know. yeah, exactly. Then I'm working for the rest of the summer mm -hmm. until I go to PCU. Gonna That's ice exactly this right. kid for the rest of the summer. Speaking of cavemen, uh, so then it's like yeah, there's an earthquake, and then uh, Polly Shore and Link hear the the uh, like the smoke alarm going off. To which there's another choreographed. Ah! Like yeah. we're simultaneously screaming at each other comically. There's uh, painted breasts against the wall. Ooh. Yep, you better believe it, dude. You got to get those cave lady knockers on there. Right. I think those are nugs. Are those nugs? Wait, what? I thought, I thought, I thought no, I think they call them bazingas or oh, something. Oh, Gonzagas. G Gonzagas, yeah. yeah. Isn't that a basketball team? It's a college. Yeah. yeah I think wait, it has a basketball wait, team. Gonzaga University? Yeah. Gonzaga. Are, are you something are you like fucking that? shitting me right no, now? No, no, no. That's a, they're a big deal school. No, they're not. <laughs> yeah, dude, they're they're wow. always in the fucking NCAA. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you got something going for you. <laughs> but so good. I was like, yay! <laughs> uh, and then we burst into the bathroom, and there's this cave lady already cleaning her own bungholes. She's what? in this bathroom. Why would she? By the do, way, why, why would she think to do that? Why would she? Exactly. Why would she think to do that? And I think I saw in the end credits. I might be wrong. That two different women played her. Like one plays her in the bathtub and one plays her after. Oh, really? That doesn't make any sense. Or was it the same cave lady from the beginning of the movie? Well, no, it's supposed Maybe. to be because that's his girlfriend. Like, right, so is it, oh, is it one at the beginning and one at the yeah. end? Who knows, man? Because I, I, the idea is like in the middle of the movie, he like realizes she's dead and he's really sad. And right. When they take a field trip, again, in June, 
oh right they take a field trip to a museum and it's like you know the evolution of man and he's fucking crying yeah. in this museum that's kind of funny but yeah so then they give her a makeover they dye her hair somehow it's also, all yeah. in like 10 minutes because this party's still raging hey, downstairs is it cool if i clean her bunghole buddy <laughs> and, ah! yeah it's a bit uh, Isn't there, it is a bit. Sean Aston get a kiss at, at some point. We mentioned that, dude. Oh shit! Lay man. off the pipe, man. <laughs> no, uh, no. <laughs> but that makes no sense, though, right? No, no yeah, I'm, not, that's I'm trying what, to backtrack it. But. No, no, no. But yeah, that's what we said. It's like a pity kiss, and then she's oh, gonna gosh. ice him for the rest of the yes, summer. Right, right. That's pathetic. Mm. Uh, but then it's humiliating. Did anybody notice this? By the way, we definitely have. I mean, this is unconfirmed. Polly Shore, there's like a close up here, like he, because he has like the final line of the movie, but there's like a close up on him in this doorway. Kind of looks like he's got a little like runny coke nose going on. Oh, is it Neil Diamond at the end of the last waltz? Uh, Neil Young. <laughs> Neil Young. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. That they know. Oh, like, oh, yes, I bet yeah. the two Neils were both coked up. <laughs> well, probably. You get two Neils together. But, but man. they definitely. <laughs> you you two read Neils, up on that. Baby. They like. They animated it out as best as possible in the last waltz because he's yeah. just got a fucking coke trip going on. But it kind of looks like Pauly Shore's that got a Neil Young thing happening. That wouldn't surprise me one bit. Uh, but yeah, and then he just does the fucking I'll be Bach. Where did we get the sexy teenage girl clothes? Because the, the the sister is like right. fucking nine. That's right. right. And like there's like these like cut off shorts and a thing. And I'm like, yeah, Pauly Shore. Is that the mom? Yeah, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> he is wearing mom. that pink mesh shirt for most of the movie. Yeah, man. Figure or it maybe, out. maybe it's the mom. The mo- oh, oh, the, oh the mom. You know, they probably modified the mom's clothes. Yeah, oh. like you, you cut those mom jeans, maybe was yeah. the idea. You did some mom mods. Mom you mod, dude. Yeah. Mom, mom Mommodsman.com. <laughs> oh, I don't want to go there. <laughs> How do you spell mommod.com? <laughs> Jack, look at this. It's a box that lets you jerk off to things. It's a what? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, you gorilla. You're going to jerk off all over that computer. <laughs> It's not Don Rickles. Yeah. Uh, oh man, Don Rickles could be in that movie too. Yeah, the duty principal. Yeah, I mean they're all dead, but they're all great. Yeah, right. And like maybe like Jack Lemmon and Walter <laughs> Matthau are called into Don Rickles' principal's office, and like they could speak old man. So it's like, all right, you boys are on the level. <laughs> <laughs> well, you made fun of the Chinese for five minutes. You're clear. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this movie grossed. Over forty million dollars, which is like a huge hit. That's yeah. wild. Yeah, back then, big time. And this, uh, every other Pauly Shore movie, uh, grossed less money every time. Well, that's a shock. Yeah. Oh, you <laughs> yeah. did the you did the research? Yeah, it's, it's on Wikipedia. It's like uh, it's like it's like forty, and then like whatever. Son in law was like thirty, and then it's like twenty. Yeah. Well, 12, we're we're getting tired of the weasel uh-huh. as the nineties went on. By Bi- Biodome was like fifteen million bucks. Ooh, that's a, what did uh, Pauly Shore is dead rake in? Remember that movie? Not, no, no one does. Yeah, exactly right. The mockumentary. People loved that in 2005. Oh, it was it was huge, man. It was totally huge. There's also a movie that came out in uh, 1999. This is a bunch of bullshit. I haven't seen it. It's a TV movie about Hugh Hefner mm-hmm. in where Pauly Shore plays Lenny Bruce. Yeah. Just imagine wow. what that could possibly be. I want to see this. Ooh. I really want to see this. My skin's <laughs> crawling. Um, <laughs> speaking of TV movies, there's a TV movie sequel to this movie. Oh, that's right. And see no woman. Yes. About the, cave, in, about the cave woman at Are the end of the movie. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm not kidding. I mean, is I don't it the think same I, cave woman, though? I mean, it's. I think it's supposed to be, maybe. Is or is it, it just wait. like we remade the first movie, but it's, it's a girl? Oh, that's a good Anyone question. else in it? Like Polly Shore? No, no one came back. Oh, then who fuck cares, man? <laughs> the fuck I, cares, man? I guess that was my question is whether or not it's canon is the idea. No, it's not kid. All right, fair enough. Uh, well, that's it. Would anybody recommend this movie? Yeah, it's kind of a hard recommend for me. It's stupid. It's silly. It's kind of fun. I don't know. I got a, I got a soft spot for 1992. Yes. Sure. I didn't really like revisiting it that much, <laughs> but I would kind of light recommend it, and I do recommend Son-in-Law, for example. Oh, of course. Uh, you have to recommend yeah. Son-in-Law. Yeah, I would recommend this movie. I mean, it's kind of whatever to me, but... It does make a good hangover comedy. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And it's kind of like if you're lightly hungover because like at 89 minutes, you pop those commercials on. You're talking like a solid two hours and 15 minutes mm-hmm. on a TV broadcast. No and- one's going to play TV and see no man on television <laughs> in the year 2017. <laughs> I guess that's true. So if you rent this on Amazon. <laughs> yes. 
Just pause it every once in a while and drag it out. <laughs> While you throw up. <laughs> That's Encino Man, directed by the great Les Mayfield. If you want more We Hate Movies, check out whmpodcast.com or find us over on the HeadGum Network. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. We are at whmpodcast and write into that mailbag. We all hate movies at gmail.com. Rate and review the show wherever you download or stream us. We would greatly appreciate it. Speaking of streaming... Let's just get this on the air because we're seeing it a lot like online and whatnot. Just to clear it all up, we switched distribution platforms, which means we are no longer on Spotify. So sorry for those couple hundred people that used that to listen to us. Unfortunately, we're not on there anymore. That's not going to update. Apologies in advance, but you can get us a shit ton of places, man. Uh, so also, it is what it is. The, uh, we, we had previously done an, uh, We Had Movies app years and years ago. Through Libsyn, um, 100 years ago. 100 years ago, Caveman Times. And that's no longer updating either, but thank you for supporting the show all sure. those years ago. Yeah. Um, Speaking of supporting the show, patreon.com slash we hate movies. Uh, that check updates out. on everything. That mm-hmm. updates on everything. It has its own custom RSS feed, so you can punch that in and get uh, shows like The Nexus and Animation Damnation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think it will be out by the. This definitely will be out by the time this airs. But of course, the uh, the brand new Twilight commentary, Twilight Ooh, commentary that's, is that's on a good there. One. Uh, so check that out, of course. And next week on the show, one last Transformers movie. Oh, thank goodness! The you last know, night. I honestly, this movie was such a relief to watch because it wasn't two and a half hours that's long. Yeah, totally. It wasn't about robots like fucking each other or whatever else is going. It's about cavemen fucking each other. Yeah, so that's why. That's why I was so relieved. And actually. We're not watching another Transformers movie for like three more weeks. I feel really relieved right mm, now. It's so awesome. But by the time right, you'll well, observe... Next, right, yes, next the, week there will be that. Yes. We're just recording this in advance. By the time you will have heard this, the next week you will hear our take on the last night, a full episode. There it is, a full episode. Oh my so, God, guys, what if it's a really good movie? Oh uh, boy. <laughs> we might be in trouble if it's a really, really mm, good movie. Yeah, uh, it's just a fucking Holocaust drama. <laughs> You know what? If this movie turns out to be awesome, we'll do an episode on The Room next week. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> Doubling down. <laughs> so until next week, where we definitely do Transformers <laughs> The Last Night, I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadek. Eric Siska. Take it easy, buddies. That was a HeadGum Podcast.